Welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Burke. I am a singer songwriter and vocal coach and guys I've got a lot of coffee again. This uh, this might be one of those reactions where I'm just spazzing out all over the place But anyway today we are going to react to basically like a compilation of the top MA MA performances for this year 2019 real quick before we get into it if you are new consider hitting the subscribe button and if you want to learn how to sing, I would love to be your vocal coach. And so what I want you to do is take my free 15 minute lesson. That lesson, if you follow along with me, I'm guiding you through some exercises. If you actually follow along, you will hear an improvement in your voice, even if you think you can't sing, even if you're just one of those shower singers. And I completely relate because that's how I was when I was first learning to sing. If you're new to the channel, you might not know my story. I've got videos on my channel you can check out if you want to. But anyway, make sure to check out that free lesson. And then for Christmas, I know a lot of people are asking about singer for Christmas, whether they're gonna give it as a gift or they want it. And I have a discount running leading up until Christmas and that is in the description as well. So you can check that out. All right, let's get into this. Oh my gosh, there's so much I gotta pause it. I won't I will, I will try not to pause it just all the time, but there is so much variety in these performances, and that's what I love. It's just always so captivating. Keeps you on your toes. Mm. Okay. I was gonna say she looks like the the one of the leads from Mamamoo, but she is. I was about to say that. Okay. I was like, am I going crazy? That group is so talented. <laughs> Wait, what was that look at the end there? It's like a little confused there. I'm telling you, Mama Moo, they are so good. You had me react to, it was like this acapella queen's um, video this one time and I freaked because I'd heard their original music like the studio versions I was just like I guess I can sing but you never know what's auto-tuned what's not auto-tuned and then when I heard them live I geeked out they're so good and they just the vocal tones are just so incredible they add that grit they lean into the sound it's amazing I'm a fanboy over here oh I've reacted to them Jeez, this dance these they'll switch between so many so, so much of k-pop k-pop music rather they just switch between so many different melodies they have so many different variances in the melodies it, but the difference is that each one of them is catchy so whereas like a fetty wop here in the states right that's somebody who just pretty much uses like one melody and then repeats it over and over again with different lyrics they just always have different melodies but they're all like what you would call an earworm in the writing community so something where you hear it and you just want to sing it over and over again. So I give them props. Like they just, they come up with these crazy melodies. Oh, oh, I wasn't ready for that. Give me my coffee. Oh my. Wait, this is awesome. That was aw Oh, I love how they did that. That was awesome. Oh, you guys have requested, you guys have requested a reaction of them for a while. So I'm going to have to do it. Got seven. I'm coming, I'm coming for you guys. We're going to analyze your vocals. Oh, I like that.
Giving like Prince vibes. Okay, wait a second. <laughs> the versatility there. Gosh. Okay, I gotta pause it really quickly. So, something I love, I love about K-pop, it's so refreshing, is that here in the States, like, as an artist, especially when I was like pushing, pushing, pushing as, a, as an artist myself and doing a bunch of shows, touring and everything, so much of the advice that you would get in the industry was stick to a brand. Like, you gotta have a brand, you gotta have a sound, and then you must stick to this sound, and you cannot stray away from it. And I would like work with some like really big name people, really big name um, industry executives. This is even like three years ago or something like that, yeah. Um, three, yeah, two, three years ago, but that was the advice that they would give. And it always just felt so hard. And I, I would talk to many of my friends also in LA and um, other artists at that time that were on the come up. And we were all just kind of like, man, it's just, it's hard to like put yourself in a box, especially when you're creating art. You want to, there's so many different um, genres of music. And many times most people love all kinds of genres. And a lot of these label executives will be like, no, the business side, you must be this because when people look at you, they must think of this, which I understand like from a marketing perspective, I guess that kind of makes sense. But what I love about K-pop is that it's completely breaking that mold. And it's like all of the, it's just all kinds of genres. Like you never know what you're going to get. And I feel like music is moving more and more towards that. Like with the more music that's coming out, it's people are really open to one artist having all kinds of different sounds. Like even here, like in the States, like a Ty Dolla Sign or even like a Post Malone to a certain extent, just on the new album, having all kinds of different sounds. And I think a lot of people are open to that now, which I love. And it's so much, makes it so much more freeing as artists to be able to just kind of create what you love. Gosh, they're so good. They're so, like, what the heck? Like, every group is so good. Okay, you go. I love the juxtaposition, like, the contrast of the super sweet melody and, like, the cutesy lyrics with this, like, gritty synth coming in, almost like dubstep <laughs> Like I'm at like a rave or something. Mm, mm, mm. I like that. Itsy. All right, I'm gonna remember Itsy. Oh my gosh. Ooh, my, my guys, Monster X. I was not ready for that. Okay, this is gonna be insane. My guy's going off there, <laughs> what the heck? Monster X. I need a sip of coffee. Jeez. There's so much stimulus coming at me right now. Wait, this energy though, this is a great example of an amazing like kind of hip hop performance where they're bringing that crazy energy. You gotta love it, you gotta love it. That is so much of, of the kind of like hip hop, rap, swagger. So glad that they're owning it like that. And look at how, how much commitment they're putting into this performance like with the moves and everything. I'm having trouble finding the melody on this song though. It's just like so much going on in that song. <laughs> My guys. So wait, the in and Oh my gosh. So this is different from MMA. Whoa! 
I don't remember this. What the what the what the hat? I remember, I've seen that one before them rehearsing that, and I remember I was like, if I, did, I, I watched it with my sister, I remember I was like, if they threw that at me, just boom, like I get right in the forehead, and just be out, just done, dead, <laughs> the end of me. So, the look at the bromance there. They're. Nice. So, the, the BTS, this is the first group that I've actually been able to hear sibilance on the mic where it really sounds like a true um, live vocal, where it's not just like 70% of studio vocal and they might be singing live like 30%. Because um, that's what I was hearing a lot before. And I, I understand because the groups before were doing all these kinds of intricate dances and it's a production. And so when you're when you when you have a big production like this, there's so many different cues, lighting, sound. It's just so many moving parts where you have to make sure you're right on. It's kind of like an EDM festival where they're not necessarily going to mix it live. They're going to have a pre-mixed set, basically, um, so that just the lighting and everything can be cued. But I, I heard live vocals with BTS, so I'm proud. That's awesome. Let's keep playing. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Hey, sheesh. I've seen this, man. This was insane. Every group did an amazing job. And I, I go back and forth with how do I feel about, about having a studio vocal in the backtrack above 50%. I'll give, if there's going to be crazy dancing, 50%, that's fine. Because you need that. There's going to be some times where you got to catch your breath in different places. And you're going to need for the audience you're going to need a little bit of a backing vocal behind you just just for the 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 audience's sake for the fans that have paid money to go see it or the people that are viewing on youtube you need that but when it's 80 percent, 90 percent of a backing vocal with the studio or of a backtrack with the studio vocals in it that's what i'm just kind of like okay wait a second is this really a performance or is it more of a dance performance which a dance performance is great but it's vocalist and here's my thing too if I didn't think that they had it, like if I didn't think that they were that good, I'd be like, okay, you know what, whatever, it's all good. But I know that all those groups are so talented. They have such amazing voices. I guess it's just not as fun to watch when you know that there's lip syncing going on and you know that there's there's not actually any singing. 50%, I get it. You know, ideally the lower of a studio vocal that you have in your backtrack, the better in my opinion, because I want to hear the raw voice. And I even think that little pitch issues here and there, that's okay. Because as the audience, it just is more fun to know this is happening live. Like something could go wrong. You know what I mean? It's like that. It's just more fun to watch knowing that that this is truly live. And of course, as a vocal coach and analyzing vocals, I want to hear them actually sing. And I did hear it for BTS, and I think I heard it for other um, other groups too. And leave me a comment. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you were like, no, no, no. They sang every one, and I want to hear about that because just from what I could tell that some of those first groups were definitely lip syncing. So leave me a comment, what do you think? Do you agree, do you disagree? If you are new, make sure to subscribe. And if you want to learn how to sing, I'd love to be your vocal coach. Take my free 15 minute lesson. It's on Singer, it's my website. Go check it out. The link is down in the description. It's a video. I'm basically guiding you through different exercises. You can follow along with me and you will hear an improvement in your voice. And then if you want to give the gift of singing for Christmas or you want to learn how to sing this Christmas, which you definitely should, use the discount in the description. Okay, so the description in YouTube has all the good stuff, the discount, and my free lesson. So make sure to check those out. And I will see you beautiful people tomorrow in the next video. Peace.
it's the way